Bill J. Hammond for the House of Fine Arts, 1963. Art should sensitize one toward environment and provide insight into the past, enrich the future and plan and build and furnish our lives. A consideration of art tells us of man's concerns, beliefs and products, his relationship with nature, age-old aspirations and follies and of God's. Contemporary art is indicative of its time, revealing the thoughts and tempo of the age. The rapid movements and great upheavals which mark our era naturally affect artists and influence art. While the resulting directions often appear radical, a common bond does link it to practices of the past. Artists have always considered the creative potentials of nearby materials. Ancient man-shaped bones or carved shells, Greek sculptors worked with marble from native hills, the Navajo formed clay from local beds, others worked with hides and feathers. The modern artist has new objectives in his environment. Maybe it is the residue from machine age or an urban society. He sees with X-ray vision through telescopes and microscopes. What of his have in mind when we speak of post-war painting is the work of those artists whose aim is not to reproduce the outward appearances of things, of reality. but to investigate the Remembering our art has a common bond with the past and a tradition of its own, originating in the movements of the early 20th century. It is not difficult to understand the transformation stimulated by Cezanne of relationship between the artist and visual reality. What before had been an attitude of passive acquiescence on the part of the painter became a dialectical relationship. The painter asserted himself and penetrated the inner life of things and images. Expression does not lie in the passion lighting of a canvas or breaking out in wild, violent movement. It lies in the whole composition of the idea. It seemed at one time that the limits had been reached with the violent outburst of fauve color. It seemed impossible to go beyond, but painting is not an escape mechanism. It has always reflected man's estate or predicament at a given time. Art will always evolve and renew itself. Regardless of materials to be manipulated or form to emerge, the personal conf function of self, idea and material is the prime factor. Nourished by thought and rides by intuition, New expressions are born through diligent search and discovery. Since art derives from its surroundings, results must be original. For each individual is a unique being, possessing certain inclination, skills and viewpoint, causing a total dependence upon the performer for the final solution. Each generation builds its own monuments. We are just now learning that modern painting solutions need not be linked to the past and the young generations are to witness new wonders. For even now evening has begun to settle upon our present forms. Each generation will devise its means. This is the challenge of art. We were invited to come recover and conserve the piece. The mural depicts the approach patterns for various famous cities. The idea being that if you are flying into these approach patterns, these are the views you would see. The mural has seen some damage over the last 60 years from people touching it due to the 3D effect. We thought that there would be more of that in the future. The piece is about 40 feet long, 13 panels of plywood that were then covered with a surface medium and oil painted over it. In addition to the oils, there was foam and paper and cardboard used to build up a sculpture which created the 3D effect. The initial portion of this piece was done by Bill Hammond out of Omaha, Nebraska. Um, so about two thirds of the art was done in 1958 to 1963. Uh, at some point it was decided that this room was going to be expanded and that wall needed to change. So in 1996, a fellow named Kroner um, emulating but not copying Bill Hammond's style, put about a third more onto it to create the full 41 foot effect. I came out and looked at the mural in November. We determined at that time we wanted it. So I brought the volunteers back in December, uh, roughly uh, eight of them. We did a reconnaissance. We examined the furniture that was in front of the piece. We examined how it was put together. Uh, we also um, uh, took measurements 
And then we went back, found a couple of crates at the museum, and did the carpentry, the measurements, the drawing, the diagrams, uh, in order to, to bring the piece home. We'll take it back to the museum. We're gonna do a little bit of inventorying and repacking to make sure it's solid in case we need to ship it. Uh, so by the time we finish the project and do the research on the piece, it'll be about 215 hours. The piece is being uh, reviewed by the U.S. Air Force Museum Program Artifact Committee, and they will determine if the Air Force wants to keep the piece. If the Air Force wants the piece, we'll ship it to them. If they don't, they may pick it up on their inventory and then sign it over to us out at our museum. Or they may determine that it's not suitable for the direction they're going with the museum, in which case it would default to our museum and then we'll pick it up on our own books. Well, this piece is special to me because photographs and drawings and things are nice, but the emotive content that went into creating each level of art here. The, uh, the brush strokes all have an emotive content that sings to the honor, the integrity, the commitment, uh, the loyalty of the United States Air Force and all the airmen in it.